picture this. You are getting into the heavier city skylines mods. You've found procedural objects and have seen the incredible structures that people have put together using hundreds of assets converted into PO, including bits that move with the movement modules. But now you're intimidated and don't know where to start. Don't worry, my friends, I have got your back. To be able to do the things I'm showing you in the video today, you will need procedural objects mod installed and some of these movement modules installed and make sure that you turn the mods on in your mods menu. I will put a link to the PO mod and these two movement modules that I'm using today in the description below. Have you ever wanted to hide a pokeball in a hamster's arms or have combine harvesters working your fields in your farming industry? Or maybe have a pokeball rotating on the carousel at the local play area just outside of your sports stadium? Or maybe, just maybe, you want to get to this level of procedural object ability. This was sent to me by my good friend, usually working. He is a procedural objects master and look at what he can do with it. If you want to see more of this level of PO work, go find him on both YouTube and Twitch as usually underscore working. I'll put his links in the description below. The man is a master. Let's recreate all three of these PO usable item thingies. We'll start with the first one, which was just the Pokeball and the hamster. It just sounds so fun. There's a couple ways of making something a procedural object. Uh, first, you find the item in your find it. So we have our Pokeball here. And the way that I personally do it is before I place it down, then I press this button down here on the right, convert to PO and then I place it. The other way of doing this is get your item, place it down first, then if you grab it with the move it mod down here, right up here. So I've gone to the three little dots and the very top one says convert to PO. And now it's a PO. I will show you if this ever happens to you, if, if you grab your item and then you convert it to PO and you place it down and it's just blank or transparent or whatever, um, but you can kind of see it when you click on the PO stuff. This means that you've chosen an item nine times out of 10 that is terrain conforming and those items don't work for PO. You generally can't PO an item that is terrain conforming. I think there's some really crazy mod stuff you can do to sort of kind of make it happen or turn terrain conforming props into not terrain conforming. But if that's what happens when you click on an item and then you click convert to PO, it goes transparent. That item just isn't gonna work. So try to find an alternative option. To delete a PO item, you click on procedural objects down here in the bottom right. That just kind of brings up everything that is PO. You see everything that's PO will have this little plus sign click on the plus sign and then click delete. This is the same way that you get into manipulating an item with PO. Click on procedural objects and click on the plus sign. The very basic stuff that we're gonna do here is done by clicking edit. The first thing that you are shown when you click on edit is these three little line dudes. They represent like planes in the world or visual planes, I guess, is the best, is a way to say it. This bottom label down here will tell you like what you're currently manipulating. So currently we are manipulating the position and the way that you do so is you just left click and grab and drag one of these three planes of existence. So I'm left clicking, I'm holding down left click and I'm moving my mouse up and down and that moves the Pokeball up and down. Same thing with the right and left, or however, north and west, whatever you wanna call these. You'll get used to moving your camera around and getting this into the direction that you want it to be in and all that sort of thing. The story is similar. If you go over to scale, it still manipulates it in the direction that you want. If you're only grabbing one of them, see how it's kind of doing that? It's just making it taller or wider or whatever. And the way that I'm I'm undoing it is I'm pressing Control Z because Control Z and Control Y work for this. Control Z is undo, Control Y is redo. So when you're doing this, like it's gonna be hard to kind of make it look good, right? Just by clicking all three and it's supposed to be a circle and it's supposed to look nice. If you want to make it bigger in all three dimensions at once, you press page up on your keyboard. Um, you can't press and hold page up, you have to like, continually press page up and or press page down to do the same thing the other way around. 
with this scale option, that's personally what I find myself using the most often is page up and page down uh, to get the <laughs> Pokeball to the size that we want it to be. The rotation one, this is the one where you're going to have to play with it the most and get used to kind of the three dimensions here. And I just, there's really no way to, uh, for me to explain this. You kind of get used to seeing these weird three lines in the way that they are, and you get used to just flip it around your objects the way that the three lines represent. You can also use Move It to select PO options if you have PO installed. So I'm just highlighting only PO here, and I'm marquee scrolling over this, and I'm just going to delete it with Move It. Now let's get this Pokeball into this hamster. So to recap, find the item that you want to use. We're going to use Pokeball. This is find it, by the way. Uh, I like to convert to PO before I put it down. Once you place it down and you have the procedural objects menu up, you click the plus icon to start manipulating it. We're going to go edit and we're going to get it kind of close into place first. And so you just move it around until it's where you want it to be. We're going to we're going to make the cute little hamster holding the Pokeball, right? Okay, that, that's a good start. Now I think I'm going to rotate it to get the button of the Pokeball kind of facing up. So there we go. And gonna have to manipulate the position a bit more again. And when you rotate things, the position gets changed. Honestly, being comfortable with this comes with time. And then I'm going to try the scale. Uh, that looks like it. Let's go down one and then the position again. What do you think? I think that looks all right. So now you X out of PO and now we have a hamster holding a Pokeball. So you've got the PO basics down. You know how to place and manipulate an item. Now we want to make some stuff move. I'm going to demonstrate the two movement modules that I find the most simple. First, let's start with these combines in the wheat fields. And I put them down the same way that I put down my other PO objects. So convert to PO. I'm going to place them here at the edge first. Let's get into the edit menu again. I'm already comfortable with their size, their position, their rotation. They're all fine, right? If you are wanting to make these guys move, you have to have the movement modules installed. And you come over to this menu and you see where it says modules. Click on it and your installed modules will show up here. This one that I used to make the combines go back and forth and the ducks go back and forth was this back and forth module, aptly named. And here's what it looks like. So these top two should be pretty self-explanatory. Enabled on means that it is actively going. So if you were to unpause, it would do its thing. Delete module just means to take off any movement that you've set here. So you would just delete it. Okay, it no longer has that module applied. Click on it again. We'll start with these two points. So this leftmost point is where you want the combine to be when it starts its movement. Currently, the combine is where I want it to be when it starts its movement. So see how it says click to set? I'm going to click to set it. So that where it currently is, is it's point A. Now I want to set where it will end, which means I take our movement, which we've done already, and I scooch it over to where I want it to end. So I want it to end about here. And then I click to set its ending point. Done. So if I were to unpause the game now, it would just do its thing over and over and over again. And see, it goes backwards. That's the simplest back and forth module. Now this is going to be your taste, but for something like this, I prefer the tractor just to like kind of disappear from over here and reappear from over here rather than driving backwards. One day I'm going to figure out how to make it drive over, rotate around and go back. I think that it's doable. That'll be a future video. But for now, let's get it set up that way so that you can follow along. For these simple PO movement modules, you don't need to mess with the speed curves. You can, if you want, just click each one and really pay attention to when it speeds up, slows down. Our straight option is just going to maintain the speed the whole way. For this simple stuff, that's all you need. Now, this rest at A. So the A is in reference to our position A, which is where we are. I'm going to have him rest there for three seconds. So he's just going to chill out there for three seconds before he does anything else. And I'm actually going to set 
him to chill out over here for three seconds also before he does anything else. Now, this from A to B is how long it will take this guy to go from point A, so over here, how long it will take him to travel to point B. My other harvesters that I had, I set at 20, so we can watch that. And then from B to A is the opposite. So how long does it take him to go from here over here? And the way that I do that kind of teleporty thing is I just set it to zero. There's no like apply button, you just let it be. So let's exit out of all of this so we have a better view and unpause the game. He's resting for his three seconds. He's moving for his 20 seconds. I'm gonna speed it up. And he's going to rest here for his three seconds and teleport back. Rest for three seconds, do his 20 second movement and then rinse and repeat. That's how these movement modules work. They just rinse and repeat. Let's pause again. Let's recap on this guy. So procedural objects, click your pl plus button, edit modules. We want the back and forth module. Let's maybe scooch him here to say that's where we want to start. And then we can scooch him there. That's where we want him to end. Speed curve, we don't care for this simple stuff. Let's have this guy only rest at A for one second, sure. And let's get him from A to B super quick. Five seconds, rest at B for, we'll say three seconds and he can teleport back home. And now we unpause and watch him do his stuff. And that's the back and forth. If you want to edit these modules, you can. You get into your menu, get into your modules menu, and up here it says current modules, you just click on it. And here it is editable. Let's change this from B to A to be five seconds as well, so that we can see what it looks like when he drives backwards. We'll unpause, we'll let him do his thing. And next, we're gonna learn how to do the rotating module. Back he goes. You see this merry-go-round here? It is an animated prop. It already rotates. I did not do this with PO, but we are going to show you how to do this type of thing with PO. So I'm going to pause the game just for ease and we're going to grab a Pokeball because, uh, you know, I like Pokemon and stuff. Put him down, make him PO, and we'll place him right about here. Perfect. This part you guys have seen before. I'm going to make him a wee bit smaller. We'll go with just the one and then going to position him where I had him before in the center-ish of this merry-go-round. See how I'm trying to, how I have to kind of manipulate the camera to get it to be exactly where I want. We're going to do the same thing, clicking on modules. And the one that we want this time is the self rotation module. Think of self rotation, meaning the object will spin in a circle around its own center. So rather than the object kind of moving in a giant circle like this, the object will stay in place and it will spin on its own center. So we're going to use that one. And if we just unpause and watch it go, it does its thing. So there's a couple things here. This enabled on and delete module are the same as they were before. The speed RPM we'll touch on in a second. Let's, let's focus it this way so that we can see the button on the Pokeball for reference. And if I unpause and I'm gonna click reverse direction, See how he started going the other way around. That's pretty logical, right? This use world rotation instead of local. I've never used it. And I, again, doing our simple stuff, there's no reason for you to use it. These rotate around X, Y, Z, change the axis that your object will rotate on. So the Y axis is represented right now by this green line. So it's rotating on the Y axis. I'm trying to get the, the button again. So watch what happens when I press X. It starts rotating on this red line. So it'll rotate itself all the way around based on this red line. If I press Z, it'll start rotating around based on this blue line. Let me get this set back up to where it was. Okay, we have our Pokeball spinning. We have it reverse direction to match the carousel and we have it on the Y axis to match what we want. The last thing we're gonna do is just change the speed of it. I'm basically gonna try to watch the button and match the speed of the Pokeball rotating to the carousel rotating. So you can go very quick, like 25, which is too quick for what we want. Basically, you just kind of tinker with the numbers until it does what you want it to do. The RPM is obviously rotations per minute. I believe 10 is what I had for 
the other carousel. Let's watch the button. That looks pretty good. Okay, let's clip out of all of this. Watch the button come back around and that is pretty darn in line with the carousel itself. And that's how I've done that. If this video helped you, please do give it a thumbs up. It helps YouTube push it to other folks so that they can also learn the cool PO stuff. If you want tips about how to manipulate water using the extra landscaping tools mod, click on the video shown on the screen now. Thanks for watching guys. I'll catch you next time.